Hi there, it's Chris Betcher here. I had a really good question sent to me the other day by Angela in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, and she was asking about the way we manage the domain naming in Google Sites. Because in Google Sites, you can actually buy a domain name and apply it to the site. So you can just have a nice short one. So you can see on the site here, um, I, this is a Google Site. Uh, but I actually registered the domain www.summitstuff.com just because it's just easier to try and tell people where your resources are if you can give them a nice simple name like Summit Stuff instead of what it normally would be, which was sites.google.com slash site slash Betcha Boys Summit. So, and it, it just, it's just easier. And yeah, I know you can do bit.ly addresses and all that, but I like to do it this way. Um, so you can go and buy a domain name. Uh, I use this uh, place called GoDaddy. Um, I actually took all my domains away from them when they were shooting elephants, but uh, they seem to be a lot better now, so I've put most of my domains back here now. Um, so you need to buy a domain name. They're normally about 10 bucks. Uh, you also need to create the Google site, and then you need to hook them together so that that domain name will point to the Google site. And there's a couple of steps involved. I'll take you through them. So the first thing you need to do is go to uh, a domain registrar. I use GoDaddy, but you know, use whatever you like. Um, and I've logged in here. And if I just go to visit my account here, uh, you'll see um, if I click on domains, I've got a few domains registered with them. Um, and let's just find Summit stuff. I think it's over on page three here. No, sorry, it's not. It's on page two. There, so Summit stuff. So I'm going to go in here and launch the um, the domain manager in GoDaddy. Okay, so I'll go in there, and here's all the domain details, and you can see where the name servers are and all that sort of stuff. Now, when Angela wrote to me, what she said was she was having trouble because the forwarding wasn't working properly. Uh, when she goes to subpages, it wasn't showing the, the correct domain. That's because she was using forwarding. And what forwarding does down here is if I, if I go in here and turn on um, uh, managing forwarding, I can turn this on, and you can go and add forwarding. So if someone clicks on summitstuff.com, it will take them to the Google site. But when it takes them to the Google site, the, the summitstuff.com in the, in the address bar actually disappears, and it just goes back to the long um, sites URL. That's not what we want. We actually want it to stay uh, locked on to that domain name. So you don't use forwarding. What you actually do is you use um, this thing called a DNS zone file. Okay. So I'm going to go into this DNS zone file and you'll see here's a whole bunch of settings here for this uh, domain summitstuff.com. Now the second part of this is back over on the Google site. If I go in here to more and manage site there's a setting in here called web address. And what you've got to do, first of all, you've got to go into your site. Well, first of all, you've got to register the domain, okay? So you own the domain. Then you come into your Google site. You come into here where it says add a web address and you add in www.summitstuff.com or whatever the domain name is, okay? Now, the important thing is when you register a domain, you're really only registering this bit here. So in this case, summitstuff.com. The bit in front of it, the www, or, or really you can put anything there, it doesn't have to be www, um, is what's known as a subdomain. And what you, the only thing you can really do with the way that the, um, the addressing works with Google Sites is you can, uh, you can direct a subdomain to, um, to your site. Now in this case, www dot is what most people put in front of a web address anyway, so it actually looks normal. But you can put any word there, and the catch is if you don't put anything there, if you just go to a browser and type in summitstuff.com without the www, it actually won't work because it's looking for that subdomain in order to, to do its thing. Okay, so you do need the www. Um, once you add a web address, now I've already added it here, okay, so um, what, when you do it the first time, you'll have a button here to say add. Once you add the thing, it shows up here in the list. It's only half the job done. The next thing, you've got to verify that domain. And the way you do that is Google have a service called Webmaster Tools. And you need to verify, basically to prove you own that domain, and Google knows about it, okay? And so the way you do that is you come to Webmaster Tools, which is just google.com slash webmasters slash tools. Um, just Google it. And uh, there's a big red button here that says Add a Site. Just click on the red button and enter the URL of the site you'd like to manage. It needs to be the whole subdomain site, so www.whatever.com or whatever your domain is. Okay, and once you do that, hit the continue button and it'll step you through the process. But what you actually end up with, if I just scroll down here a little bit, you should see here is the record, here is the, um, the verified domain, www.summitstuff.com. 
Okay, so once you've added the site in here, um, you've verified it, that's all good. Then what you do is you go back to GoDaddy, go to the DNS zone file page here in the settings, and scroll down and you'll see there's this thing called a CNAME alias. And what you need to do is create the subdomain, which in this case is www, and you point it to this service called GHS, which I, I think stands for Google Homepage Services, um, dot googlehosted.com, okay? GHS dot googlehosted.com. And uh, the way you do that, by the way, is you just, uh, once you're on the zone file page, you hit the edit button, you'll have the ability there to do a quick add. When you click on that, you'll type in www, you'll put in here ghs.googlehoster.com, and then you'll save the zone file. And what that does, and again, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it here, but, but um, it, it saves that zone file. So what you've done is you've created this thing now. So the Google site knows that the domain is supposed to point to it. The manager of the domain knows it's supposed to point to Google hosted services, and Google hosted services knows where your site is. So you've got this kind of arrangement where all the servers are suddenly aware of each other. Now it takes, they say it takes a couple of hours. I actually say it takes up to 72 hours for that to propagate, for that for all the servers to become aware of each other. Um, I generally find it's much quicker than that. It's usually done within an hour. Um, but you know, give it a few hours if it's not showing up straight away. Um, and that's basically how you hook up a Google site to a domain name.